what's up everyone, Simi Karofsky back with another video. And I know I haven't been filming a lot here because there's just not really that many spots I can film besides in my barracks room. So just for now, um, for the time being here at school, I'm just gonna try to just do these sit down videos in my barracks room to where I just um, give you some little bit of information about like the starting process of the military or just any other videos. I might get some fitness videos out like I used to before, um, but it, it just depends on like um, what I'm what I'm able to film and where I can film here at the Naval Air Station. So um, I've only been in uh, the military for about five, six months now, um, just fresh out of boot camp, MCT and all that. So um, a lot of like actual questions about like the fleet and stuff I can't answer because I haven't experienced it yet. But if you want um, to ask some questions about just boot camp, MCT, or just like the starting process of the delayed entry program and trying to get in the military, um, you can ask those questions below or just hit me up on Snapchat or Instagram at Simeon underscore Karaski and I'll try to help you out as best as possible. Again, I had I don't know that much about like actual like the process later on in the military or in the in, in the Marines, but um, all the beginner stuff, I'll try to help you as best as I can. So um, the topics of today um, is going to be how to like, what's the easiest way you can make it through boot camp and not get dropped. A lot of people think that like, once you go to boot camp, you're only going to be there for 13 weeks and then you graduate and you're all good. But there's actually a lot of instances where people get dropped throughout recruit training and um, they end up being at boot camp for a lot longer than they need to. Um, a lot more in 13 weeks. Sometimes they can be there freaking four or five months. You never know. Sometimes people even have longer process processes under certain circumstances. So I'm just going to go over that, try to give you like the, the do and don'ts what you should and should not do in boot camp, and just go over those specific topics and try to help you out the best as possible so that you can be prepared and not get dropped and be able to just finish boot camp in 13 weeks and be able to see your family and go on your uh, boot leave. So yeah, let's go ahead and get this uh, this video started and we'll start with the very first topic. Okay, so that brings me to topic number one, which is gonna be uh, physical preparation and also injury prevention. And these actually tie together very well and are both very important um, together is that if you go into boot camp in really bad shape and you're overweight, too skinny, all that, um, and you just toss yourself um, into those the brutal workouts of uh, boot camp, um, you can put yourself in a pretty dangerous situation of getting yourself injured. And if you're, as you already know, if you're unhealthy, you're overweight, and you get tossed in those situations, um, there you're more susceptible to injuries. So like. I cannot stress it enough, you actually need to take that serious and try to get in better health before boot camp. Because although a lot of people do go in boot camp in pretty bad shape and then they end up uh, losing a lot of weight and getting a lot healthier in boot camp and um, shedding like 40, 50 pounds and um, are perfectly fine and graduate on time, that doesn't mean you should just completely ignore that and just do what they did. Try to get in shape before you go to boot camp so that you can have the easiest easiest uh, way possible of getting through. Because if you're if you're out of shape and you end up failing like the PFTs or the CFTs, the combat fitness test, the physical fitness test, and you're not able to do enough pull-ups, you're not able to do enough crunches or get, get the qualified run time, you're gonna get dropped back to a different company and boot camp, and you could be delayed like another week and have to restart. Um, restart that last week of training and you're going to be there a lot longer you could be there an extra week or if you keep failing you could be you could drop back and uh be there a lot longer than that so yeah just try to stay in shape or get in shape before boot camp and so that you don't even have that issue okay so topic number two and that's going to be the overuse of medical so at boot camp of course they have medical you can go there whenever you want um drill instructors cannot refuse you to go to medical at any time at boot camp you can go at any time you need, but also at the same time, if you go to medical too much and you miss too many training days in boot camp, you can get dropped to another company and your training can be a lot longer than it needs to be. So um, a lot of people just say, don't go to medical too much because you're gonna get dropped. And uh, that is true. Um, but at the same time, you can, you can go to medical if it's something that it's really serious and that it's going to be dangerous to your body or your health if you don't do it. So if you have a serious injury, you really need to go to medical. Um, but if it's something that's just simple, like sprained ankle and all that, just toughen it out. And uh, just toughen it out. Don't don't go to medical. Just 
just toughen it out so that you're not dropped back to a different company. But you don't wanna make the injury a lot worse or anything like that. Now, if you do have pneumonia, um, a lot of times they expect you to get pneumonia at boot camp, so they're not gonna really drop you for that unless it's like really serious and ongoing. I had pneumonia all through boot camp and um, it was really no problem. They already, they already expect everyone to get pneumonia in boot camp, so they're not gonna drop you for that unless it's very serious and you are not able to train, you cannot physically train. Now it was like harder to train for me, but it was really no big deal. I still was able to do all the physical requirements and still, still do that pretty easily. So just um, do what you gotta do, but don't overuse medical. Don't do it too much. Don't like, oh, I got a little cough. I got a little, I'm sneezing a little bit and go to medical all the time. There's really, you're gonna be sick all through boot camp. So just don't abuse medical and go way too much. Because if you do miss too many training days, you're not, you're gonna get dropped back and um, you could make everything a lot longer than it needs to be. Okay, that brings us to topic, topic number three, which is gonna be like the academic portion of boot camp. And if you don't know already, a lot of people don't talk about this, but in boot camp, you actually have a lot of graduation requirements that are like actual written exams and stuff like that about knowledge and history of the Marine Corps. So um, there's a lot of that testing as well. And so when you're at boot camp, just make sure you actually study that, all your general orders, all your history, all your enlistment rank structure, officer rank structure, because uh, all the stuff when you're in the debt program and you're enlisting, all that stuff they try to teach you um, to better prepare yourself for when you go to boot camp, you actually do learn that stuff in boot camp. So um, actually pay attention to that and actually study at boot camp. They're gonna really hammer it into your head and you're gonna be studying it all the time, but don't neglect that because if you do fail, I think they give you like three time, uh, three chances to take like this written exam. Um, but if you do fail all, all three times, um, and if you fail, like there's a, there's what's called, I forgot exactly what's called, uh, combat care, which is like you're uh, replicating, like saving someone's life. Um, and it's just like a mannequin, a dummy, and you're replicating sa saving someone's life by like applying a tourniquet. It's a lot of different medical type of stuff. Um, you're gonna be tested on that as well. You're gonna be tested on um, like the functionality and the parts of a rifle, stuff like that. And that all counts as uh, what's called PRAC, and it's just basically your academic portion of boot camp. Um, just study that, um, listen to what the drill instructors say, actually listen to what they're saying, because they're trying to tell you exactly what you need to know in order to be successful and, uh, and pass it easily and move on to the next part of boot camp. So yeah, pay attention to that and you won't be dropped. And that brings us to number four, which is like a really bad one and really shouldn't happen. Um, you shouldn't go into the military if you're gonna do this anyways. And the Marine Corps does take this very serious. So um, don't get caught doing this. Don't do it whatsoever anyways. And that's being an integrity violator, something very serious in the Marine Corps and they don't like is they don't like people that lie and try to cheat. So um, there's a lot of, like sometimes people will be caught. This I don't remember this necessarily happening with my platoon, but um, I've heard from other friends and some friends on the East Coast that this happens actually kind of fre frequently is that people like try to cheat, uh, maybe write, write down that they got a certain score on a event or something like that and uh, try to fake like they did something but they didn't actually do it. They try to cheat on a test, anything like that. Um, if you try to cheat off the paper next to you when you're doing the written exam, um, stuff like that, and you're trying to get away with something that's not allowed, um, you could become an integrity violator and you could be dropped back all the way to training day one. It's happened before, it doesn't happen a lot, but don't do that. And also don't disrespect officers, don't disrespect like your higher ups, your drill instructors, all that type of stuff. Um, because if you're like super disrespectful and you refuse to train, um, you're gonna be dropped back and possibly all completely kicked out of boot camp. And that goes on your record, don't mess with that. That's really bad. Don't ever, why are you even joining the Marine Corps if you're even gonna attempt to do anything like that? So yeah, stay away from that. Don't be an integrity violator. Don't try to cheat. It's not worth it. And that brings us to topic number five, which is gonna be not necessarily like something not to get dropped, but um, just to make boot camp more smoothly and easier for you, and that's staying under the radar. Now, don't, if you, if you wanna be a squad leader or a guide, don't do this. Um, actually put out 
and make sure you're volunteering for a lot of things and you're uh, you're always yeah you're always trying to volunteer um, always trying to be a leader and always try to get the the drill instructor's attention in a positive way but if if you're trying to just stay back just get through boot camp without getting like focused on or targeted um, you're gonna want to stay under the radar and how you do that is um, you don't want to be the guy that's just like smiling and laughing all the time you don't want to be the guy that um, falls back and is slow at everything and gets the drill instructor's attention um, you don't want to be the guy that just moves around acts sloppy and just says and just yeah says stupid things and asks really dumb questions like you're gonna get targeted and they're gonna they're really gonna focus on you throughout boot camp so just um, try to blend in um, don't like don't slack don't try to be someone that doesn't do anything don't do that because obviously you don't want to be a bad marine but at the same time just uh, be the one that just gets everything done easily um, that passes with good grades on all the qualifications and never gets noticed for that type of stuff and you'll be good you won't be they won't target you as much and um, there's certain people that they're just automatically going to tar target um, but uh, otherwise you can't really help it if, if you're just automatic target and there's no really reason for it and they just target you anyways sometimes there's nothing you can do about it like my rack mate he was definitely one of the examples of people that like he he created like all the targeting for the drill instructors because he would always smile laugh ask the stupidest possible questions um and just the drill instructors targeted him so much everyone knew his name everyone knew who he was if if he did just the little smallest mistakes the drill instructors would be iting him if you don't know what that is it's like called intensive training where they make you do a bunch of push-ups and mountain climbers and all that type of stuff and him like they were always iting him and always focusing on him and they always uh if they wanted to, someone to do a, like an extra a task they would like call out for him because they always knew his name and it was just an easy target for them so yeah just don't don't be the guy that just asks stupid questions and laughs laughs all the time um it's not worth it um it's not really worth it um it will just make it a lot easier going through boot camp if you don't so yeah that's that's all i got for you um hope you like the video hope, hope you find it informative if you have more questions about this um just let me know and I'll try to help you out as best as possible. And um, yeah, as I said, I've only been in the boot, uh, I've only been in the Marine Corps for about five months now. So a lot of the topics like about Marine Corps career, I can't really answer because I haven't got to that point. But if you have some questions about boot camp or just starting the uh, Marine Corps process, I'll try to help you out as best as possible. So yeah, um, thanks for watching. And uh, if you want to follow me on social media, it's at Simeon underscore Karoski. And yeah, I'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching.